All right, we're back again at the digital job site. Uh, I'm going to do some work on our window component, in specific the sash that we've created for this double hung window. We want to put some muttons in here to give it the divided light appearance, uh, and that way uh, Pat can decide if uh, what window configurations he wants. This is going to be a there are two sashes with eight panels each, and he may want to use a different size window, different number of muttons combined two windows side by side rather than one large one. But this will give the visual and functional aspects of this window to make those decisions. All right, so we're going to jump into this uh, window component here. We want these uh, muttons to be all uh, nice and evenly spaced. Let me just use a couple SketchUp tricks. First off, I want to divide the sash in half so we can get the main uh, uh, mutton in uh, in the center. I'm just going to make these about three quarters of an inch thick is what they uh, I'm assuming they'd be on these uh, silver line windows. So I'm just going to offset this three eighths of an inch. In that case it's easier to enter the fraction. And uh, so that oops, uh, zinged out there out of view. So I'll take out the center line. All right and then with uh, four panels wide we'll have um, three muttons at three quarters of an inch should be two and a quarter each. So I'm going to just follow with me here. I think this will make sense when I'm done doing it. I'm going to take advantage of SketchUp's ability to uh, measure and divide. I don't have to get out a calculator and jot a bunch of notes down. All right. So the space between this uh, guideline and the sash represents three of the muttons we're going to have. So the remaining space is the total width of the glass. So I just drew a line here. I'm going to select the line and right click it. It gives me the option of dividing it. Then by just dragging my mouse back and forth it'll divide it into as many or as few uh, lines as necessary. And I want to have four panes of glass so I'm going to divide it into four equal segments. And I'm going to erase three of those which gives us one segment left. So if I draw from the end of that, you can, you can tell on your uh, drawing program when you get to the end of the line is a green circle. I'm just going to go in a green direction and click. Now I have a rectangle that exactly represents one of the panes of glass. And the next one over is going to be three quarter inch away because that's what we decided for our um, mullion thickness. Now I'll select this rectangle, move tool, hit control, which allows me to move a copy of this and then by typing in 3x enter uh, we end up with three equally spaced panes of glass. Just like that, no calculator, let's sketch up through the work. Get rid of those guys. Alright, now we're going to take these three panes and select them. Hit the control key and move the panes down just duplicated those. And now to create the muttons, I'm just going to pull this out, three eighths of an inch, flip the sash around backwards, hit the control and come three quarters. Somehow I've gone to fractions here instead of the decimals like I was talking about a minute ago. Reverse a couple faces. Alright, there's our sash. And to get the full effect here, we're going to grab the paint bucket and put a translucent material into these panes. Oh boy, that's not the one we want. Okay, that's more like it. Got the barn paint going on there. Okay, so we're just going to change these into translucent. Which gives us a sash, which is nicely divided, and all that good stuff. So we'll go into our window component and delete this sash. The sash we want to duplicate and move. I'm just going to give this another. Now let's see. We'll just move it first. Move it back, then we'll copy it and move the sash forward. Jumped out of view there. I used the zoom extents tool to kind of find where I went wrong there. It gives me the whole perspective. And now I can grab one sash and move it up into position. 
And if I did everything right, then those two sash um, fit into the jam. They overlap each other at the mullion and uh, all's well with the world. I'm going to move this one forward in the jam position a little bit here. Fit a little nicer. So we have a window component. We don't need this one anymore. I'm going to erase it. But what we have is a window component in the shed model with all the features of the one we built. And I'm not sure what Pat's got in mind here, but I'm just going to scoot this over and make a copy of it. And um, copy it again just for grins. If he wants to put one over here, we can just paste it. And we'll just put a couple windows in the side here. Money's no object here. We can make all these we want, and Pat gets to pay for them. So there's a bunch of windows in the shed model. If we turn on the sunshine, you can see the light shining in the windows. If we go in the back of the shed, just for now I'm going to delete this side. You can see the light shining in the, sh in the studio. Oh, all right, looks like I got rid of two walls there, didn't I? Okay, I'm going to back up and put those back in there. But you get the idea. You can see into the model what the sunlight is doing and uh, how that works by if we want to hide the roof. And get in here, delete this. Computer's choking on me there. Anyway, so you can kind of see how the light shines in if you play with the shadow settings. Uh, this is December, and it's sometime in the afternoon. You can kind of see where lights would be shining in the studio space um, with the windows placed and sized accordingly. There you have it. That wraps up this session for the digital job site. For now, we're going to add a, a shed roof to the back of this and uh, create a door component to put in in a future session. Check out all the other videos at um, the digital job site blog at finehomebuilding.com when you get a chance. Thanks for watching.